In this presentation, we will talk through and walk through the process of recording encumbrances and expenditures. This being one of the more confusing items because it involves a budgetary account appropriations, which doesn't sound like any of the two accounts that we typically think of in like a normal type of income statement account, revenue and expenses, but is related to the expense type of account. So it's the budgetary account that would be related to the expense type account, except that we don't typically have just expenses. The expenses are now called expenditures. And then on top of that, we have the budgetary account, which doesn't really act like a normal budgetary account, more like a clearing account, as we'll explain when we go through examples of encumbrances. Therefore, this is usually one of the more confusing processes, and it's one that we'll spend a lot of time in with examples. It makes a lot more sense once we go through these with examples and actually post these out, post the budgetary account for appropriations, post the encumbrances, and then the related expenditures. So we'll go through it in words here, then we'll go through a lot of examples about that, about this, and that's when it'll really get more concrete. Revenue sources and classifications. At this point in time, we're gonna say that we have already posted the budgetary accounts of appropriations. Then the next thing that's gonna happen is a purchase order or some kind of contract, some type of estimate. The purchase orders and contracts are reviewed to see if a valid appropriation is there. So in other words, we're gonna say, hey, there's an appropriation on the books. We set up the appropriation, which is in essence, an estimate of what we think the expenditures will be. We've recorded the appropriations. Then when we have a purchase order, and you can consider and think of the purchase order similar to what we would have in terms of a purchase order for a for-profit organization. The purchase order is kind of that strange type of document that we're going to record. We're going to send it to the vendor in a for-profit organization, but we don't record a journal entry related to it. In other words, if we wanted something like inventory, we wanted to order the inventory, we'll fill out a purchase order, we'll send it out to the vendor and hoping that they're going to give us the inventory. But at the time of the purchase order, we have not paid for the inventory, we have not received the inventory, and therefore there's no financial transaction on our books yet. We're not going to record anything. We're going to track the fact that we sent out a purchase order. We're going to hope and expect that we're going to receive inventory uh, for that purchase order, but we won't record the inventory or the payment for it or the billing of it until we receive the inventory or until some type of payment happens. And in this item, we're going to say that once we issue the purchase order, we're actually gonna record this item because what we're saying is we wanna be very transparent here in terms of what's going on, not just recording the financial transaction, but where the funds have been assigned to. So we're gonna say, we actually record the budget, which means that the appropriation is on the books now, meaning we've already assigned, in essence, where we think this money's gonna go. Then we review the purchase order to see if it's valid in accordance with lining up with uh, the appropriation. And at that point in time, we do kind of the funny thing, which is we actually record that. We're gonna say, we're gonna record that the appropriation is encumbered for the amount of the purchase order or contract. So now we have the appropriation on the book, books, and we still haven't got the inventory, we haven't paid for it, we just sent out the purchase order, but we're actually gonna record that. We're gonna record like the purchase order, which is again, something we don't typically do in for-profit accounting. And the purchase order is gonna increase the encumbrance account and the other side's gonna have to go to an, an equity type of account. It's, and I would call this more of a clearing type of account. All this is saying, hey, it's like, here's the budget, and now we've, we've even more uh, committed to it by actually approving a purchase order, which is basically, we can think of as an estimate of the encumbrance has now been approved and, and basically the purchase order's out or the contract is there, although we have not yet paid for it and therefore can't record what would be kind of like the expense be under a normal type of accrual system or cash system, but we want to record the fact that we've committed to the purchase order or contract, and therefore we're going to record this encumbrance. And then when goods or services are received and the invoice is approved, record the appropriations being expended. So then what we're going to do is we're basically going to reverse the encumbrance that we recorded, which is just basically recording the purchase order. It's just like a holding account. And then once we actually have the expense that we would think of as more normal time period when we would record it, when a financial tra transaction actually happens with regards with what would be related to an expense expenditures, when that actually takes place, then we record what we would think the normal transaction would be, increasing uh, the expenditure and crediting uh, a payable or cash at that time. So the process is going to be looking like this. We're going to record the appropriation that's the budgetary account. So we're going to say, hey, we're going to record the appropriation, put it on the books. We've That's us estimating, in essence, what the expenditures, the income statement account related to expenses 
will be. We've already basically, uh, you know, estimated, assigned them. Then we're going to have the encumbrance. That's when we're really committed to the item with a purchase order or an estimate or a contract that we've approved and assigned out the appropriations to that contract. We're going to record this in what I would call a clearing account, which is kind of, but it's still like a budgetary account, but I would call it a clearing account, a holding account, an interim account, because we cannot yet record the actual expense under an accrual basis or modified accrual basis yet because we haven't received anything and we haven't paid for anything so there's no financial transaction under a normal accrual process nothing triggers the actual financial transaction but we want to be transparent that the appropriation has now been committed to a specific contract or purchase order and then we're going to have the actual expenditure when we have the expenditure that's when the normal triggering process would happen under what would be similar to an accrual basis or a cash basis a financial transaction has happened we can recognize the expenditure on the modified accrual basis in accordance to the modified accrual basis rules as we do so then we're going to have to reverse the encumbrance because the encumbrance is going to be on the books just as a holding account until we actually record the expenditure so you can't have these two on the books relating to the same item this encumbrance is a holding account until we're able to record the expenditure at that point in time we have to reverse and remove the encumbrance that is related to the expenditures that have now been incurred and recorded.